Hello and welcome to episode 2 of the Rating um, Climb series. <clears throat> Last episode was quite short, quite an easy win. And today we are up to 1140 rating. We're going from 1000 to 2000. So yeah, just get straight into it. Player and Kings Indian Defense. Um, got some house music in the background. Hopefully it's at a decent volume for you guys. I did like three takes to make sure that it was like <laughs> not too loud and not too quiet. So if um, if it needs turning up or down for next uh, video, then please let me know. Apologies for that. Uh, clearly I'm very professional at this. Um, I'm kind of just like trying to upload every day for at least the next couple of weeks and just, I don't know, see if people enjoy it because... I'm gonna play, like, I, I play online chess regardless, um, and there was someone in a community post that I did recently asking me to do a rating climb series rather than reviewing games, so if you guys enjoy this more, then let me know. But anyway, back to the game. The opponent doesn't go for e4, which I feel like it allows us to go d5 and play it like a sort of Grunfeld. Um, because the point of having a pawn on e4 is to guard the d5 square. So now if he plays here, ooh, he trades, which is a strange decision. Typically you'd expect e4 in this position to attack the knight and force me to take. And then after pawn takes, the pawn, the e4 pawn is nice and secure. If he plays like this, we could uh, pin the knight to the queen and put a lot of pressure on but bishop e2 and I don't think there's anything there really question is where do we want our pieces I feel like it might be good to trade his we could fianchetto I kind of like fianchettoing bringing the knight to d7 and going for c5 to try and open up this diagonal This, he can play this move. I actually want him to. Interesting is f5 controlling the square. But that does weaken this diagonal a lot. So I'm going to go for b6. Um, castles, bishop b7. Now obviously this knight can't move because it's mate in one. So... He's going to have a bit of trouble developing this bishop, unless he goes for e4. It should lift your teams up. Oh, CRM shouldn't got an advert going. <laughs> Skip that real quick. Okay, so he decides to fianchetto. So this is now a move, because he can't take, because we win the rook. But after c5, bishop b2, the pawn's still actually pinned, because if he takes, I win the bishop. So c5, bishop b2, knight c6, applying pressure. We have one, two, because the pawn's going to be on c5. So we have the knight, the pawn, the queen, and the bishop attacking. And he has the bishop, the pawn, and the knight defending. And if our queen ends up on there after everything's traded, what's important is that the bishop can't move with a check to open up an attack on our queen. And also... This knight is still going to be pinned to the g2 pawn in a lot of scenarios. So he's not going to be able to take with the knight because we're going to mate him. So I think c5 is begging to be played here. I think kind of striking while the iron's hot. Queen c2. I don't think that addresses the problem. So if we go knight c6 applying more pressure... After e4, can we take? Knight takes, pawn takes, knight takes, bishop takes, and we have this. We have um, bishop takes h1, a1 at the end. And so we get a queen and a rook, and they get our queen and our knight that took there. So we go up and exchange. We're also threatening knight to b5 potentially. b4, sorry. I didn't actually see that move. But... 
does that work? There, there, there. Three, there, 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 there. There, there. So we lose a rook, a bishop, a queen. Wait, let me think. Knight takes, bishop takes, knight takes queen, bishop takes bishop, knight takes rook, bishop takes rook, rook takes rook. So we end up with a bishop, a rook, and a knight. They end up with a rook, a knight, and a bishop, because we take this at the end of the line. Uh, but we do win a pawn. Hmm. And obviously if we just go here and he takes, then we take the bishop. Or do we just drop back? Because we're still threatening this. If we drop back and he goes rook to d1. I, I don't know, I kind of like knight takes pawn. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm pretty sure I've calculated that correctly. <laughs> I'm 90% sure I've calculated that correctly. I don't think I've missed anything. Okay, so he goes like this. Which, we just got up a pawn again. But, this is pinned, and our bishop's really good. And if we take this knight, we can ruin his pawn structure, and we just up a clean pawn. The thing is, there's no way our opponent calculated that whole line. I think he got scared of taking the queen. So here the pawn's still pinned. Now we can take, take, and t take, take, and take. And just go up a second pawn, which we're going to do. We can play rook d8, probably this rook, because this rook wants to go on the c file. And he can't take because it's pinned, and if he goes rook d1, it doesn't really matter. But let's just do it, because it just poses a bit of a dilemma for our opponent, because he might just make a bad move, right? If we take, it forces his hand. See here, I think that the other rook should have gone to d1. Because I think his rooks probably belong on d1 and c1. I think this is a bit useless because I think we can just go e5. And after this, we can just take it. My opponent has left the game. So I hope he hasn't just um, done it out of spite and given up, but no, no, I think he's back. I mean, we're up two pawns in this position and his pawn structure is ruined, right? So what I propose is that we bring our rook to c8 and try to get onto his second rank. Now if we go here to attack the rook. I think the bishop's done its job. This pawn's defending this now. And this is hanging, but his rook's hanging. I'm going to play f6 to support this. So our bishop can be doing a lot more than just sitting and staring at a pawn, right? Especially when I can just use a pawn to sit and stare at the pawn. Why use a bishop when you can use a pawn, right? And then we can make the most of our pieces. Because this pawn's not doing anything on f7 anyway. This diagonal is irrelevant because there's no queens to access the diagonal and there's no light squared bishops to access the diagonal. Okay, well that just gives us a pawn. <laughs> okay. Thank you, bro. Appreciated. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I guess if we take with the pawn, it splits our structure and he can win this pawn, but I can just take with the bishop and the threat remains and my bishop is beautiful here and now we infiltrate 
So we play bishop onto this diagonal to force the rook back. If it goes to e1, then we have d3. Okay, well, I think our opponent is self-destructing a bit here. Just checking there's no tricks. Obviously, there's no back rank mate because we have g7. So we can just take with the rook. And he's just given us a bishop. Probably should have played bishop here, rook here, bishop here, but yeah, we just up a rook. Um, now let's not play any bad moves. Let's think logically. You know, I want to put the bishop on c1 because the rook guards it. And the bishop does a great job alongside the rook of cutting the king off. Yeah, but the, it, it, it can't stop the king from getting there. But we can bring the bishop to b2 and then to c3. I think that's a good plan. And the rook is obviously still, still dominating. Okay, I don't get that move. Now we can just advance. And again, the rook and the bishop work together to nearly entirely cut the king off. But... We're just going to push the promotion now. Like, there's no need to go grabbing pawns when we can just promote, you know? Priorities. Now we're going to guard the pawn with the bishop so the rook can go on the back rank to challenge his, his rook. And here... Yeah. Here we can ignore the threat on the bishop because we're attacking his rook. And if he takes our rook, we get a queen. And the bishop maintains guard of this pawn, so the king can't take it. And if the rook takes it, then we just go up a rook. It's a good move from our opponent, but we're just going to take. And then we're going to play f5 to open up the route for our king. Our opponent can't take our bishop because we queen, because the king takes his eyes off the promotion square. And... All we have to do is get our king in. We can take this pawn and push this one and it's game over. Now here if our opponent goes here, we can actually expedite the process by bringing our king to control this square. And we can pre-move a queen. There's no stalemate tricks because he's got so many pawns on the board. Uh... <clears throat> So we don't have to worry about that. Let's play b5 just to cut the king off. Um, to make checkmate a bit quicker. Just don't give him anywhere to run to. If he goes a4, I'm just going to bring this pawn here. Because the king now can't advance. And now we're just going to bring our king in. And this is kind of like the board is split. Because the king can't get past this rank. So we can give... We, we can deliver a checkmate as if this is the back rank. Because the king can't get to the next rank. And so this is mate. Because if you imagine... Um, let's go back. Let's imagine we get this position... And let's just not stalemate him. So we're, we're checkmating him on the back rank, right? Um, but we essentially have the same thing as if this is the back rank, if you understand what I'm saying. Because we cut him off with our pawn, and his pawn, he obviously can't take himself. So yeah, a pretty comfortable win. Uh, our opponent doesn't really understand the opening because he needs to play e4 so that I can't go d5. Because once I go d5, he needs to play this move, really. Um, because then I have to go like this. And I'm happy because I'm still probably going to win the pawn because he can't take. Because not bishop f6. Because I win the rook. But gives him more chances. Anyway, 
we go into this position. Computer wants C5 straight away, but I wanted to get this uh, construction of pieces, as I was saying before. And here, yeah, C5. Computer wants us to take. And after this. Okay, same sort of thing. Doesn't really matter, I don't think, on the move order. But yeah, here, Knight takes D4 is the best move, which I'm very happy about. Um, yeah, something like Queen here, I'm losing my my advantage. Knight here is the best move, and I'd calculated this. And here, I'm up a pawn, and my bishop is dominant. And so, after something like this, bring the rook in. This is not only in my upper pawn, but my pieces are better than his pieces, right? That's kind of the crucial thing. This knight has nowhere to go. This bishop can't, it's going to struggle to challenge my bishop. And I can also take control of the file before, um, before he can. So I'm really happy with that. With finding knight takes d4 our opponent takes the knight um to avoid the complications but then we just go into this winning end game where we go up two pawns here again it is better to play rook d8 ah, because of bishop a3 i actually didn't see that <laughs> but i played the best move anyway um okay it wants rook here probably to double up but I don't really see the need. Um, it wants f5, whatever. It's not really important. Pretty self-explanatory. And then from here, it's just an easy win, right? Like, there's, there's nothing to it. Just give him checkmate quicker, rather than promoting this pawn. Although, obviously, you can just promote the pawn, like... There's nothing stopping you from doing that. So yeah, that was game two of the rating climb. That gets us up to... What are we on? 1,183. So we're only about 800 off of 2,000. I expect the games to get a lot harder though. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe. Please comment if you enjoy this series and want me to keep on doing it. But um, yeah, that's for now. Have a good one.